Welcome to this information sharing tips, tricks and hacks video with me, Mr. Silly P. Are you finding awe a chore? Is it becoming a bore? I'm going to stop there. That's as far as it's going to go. Um, this is a kind of hack advice video. Now, some of you have probably already solved this problem and already working on other solutions and things. And this is by no means the only way of solving a problem. But if you are going to be making metal and silver on forest, and a lot of the productions require them, barrel making and the roller coasters, and there's a lot of things that need metal. One thing you have to do is go to production chains. You're going to have to go down and you're going to have to place the iron furnace. Once the iron furnace is placed, you bring iron ore to the iron furnace. That turns into metal. If we go to this menu here and on the bottom there, we are on iron furnace metal the recipe is great 416 to 380 so you're getting more metal out than iron ore you're putting in which i think usually would be the other way around but that's absolutely wonderful no problem at all and up here at the iron peaks mining company it's constantly producing iron ore which comes out of here and gradually forms a pile on the floor now i have found that you can't just put a trailer underneath it it won't go into that, it just goes onto the floor, and the same with the bucket, which can be a bit of a nuisance, can be a bit of a pain, because you'd like to think, well, if I just leave a vehicle there, I can leave a trailer underneath it, over time it will gradually fill up, I'll just come and get the trailer. doesn't always necessarily work. This, these are the two pieces of equipment we start with, that are up here anyway. Um, I was given a piece of advice, and apologies, because I can't remember who it was now, but if you reset these, so they're on the map already. You don't own them. You don't lease them. They're, they're just on the map. The same as the forklift truck down at the other sawmill. If you reset them back to the main store, you can then tab into them. So previously you can't, but once you've done that, you're able to tab into them. Just a, you know, lots of little helpful, useful hints and tips. People have been sending me messages, giving me ideas, throwing things at me and saying, were you aware of this? Did you know that? I thought, you know what, easiest thing to do, let's roll a load of stuff up into a video. And if it helps you out, great. If you know it already, that's also great. So, these are the two bits you start with. Fairly small piece of machinery. The bucket on that's quite small. The obvious solution immediately is, we'll upgrade the size of the bucket. We can move more, get a larger trailer, bang. Of course you can. Part of the, obviously, the Platinum expansion, we've got the Volvo. So get yourself a massive old Volvo and get yourself a huge 10,000 litre bucket, which comes with the pack, the Volvo bucket. And I can move 10,000 litres of iron ore at a time. Now, the great thing with this is it's free for anybody. You don't have to pay for the iron ore whatsoever. You just come and collect it and you get a big old pile. But you still need to use the bucket. And that's OK. There's nothing wrong with that. 10,000 litres at a time, it's no slouch. But what you could do is get yourself a conveyor belt. Now, not all of these pick up from the floor. This one, however, does. The Grimmer SL8022 Quantum and TC816 Autoload by Dr. Julia. Find that. This also, you can set it so it has a speed. If we go to our tools, we go down to our belt systems and out to the end there. There are the two. This one here, we can have the SL8022 Quantum or the Quantum 40 kilometers per hour. That will go at 20, sorry, 40 kilometers per hour. That will go at 26 miles per hour. That goes as fast as some tractors. So getting it to and from wherever you need to go, pretty straightforward. We can change the logo design, and we can change the main color, and we can change the rim color on that. That's great. But the great thing about that being, because it picks up from the floor, all I've got to do is switch it on, and our iron ore, hopefully if this works. <laughs> we can have the belt here all the time, which means you don't need to leave a vehicle here. You don't need to leave a, a wheel load. You don't have to have a vehicle with a bucket. You can just have to, that sitting there the whole time. You just come back every now and again when there's a big old pile and boom, we're sorted. It, it's just, it saves time. Now, if you're happy with it, again, you know, I'm not teaching granite to suck eggs. It's one of those things, if you're happy doing this, and to start off with, this is the equipment you've got, and if you're starting on a start from scratch, you've got no money, this is already up here at the mine, absolutely chug away. You know, I, I found a lot of the, what are considered mundane jobs, I'm blissfully happy, spending ages just going backwards and forwards doing the same thing. It doesn't bother me at all, but I'm just saying, if this will help in any way, shape or form, then that's absolutely fantastic. You can bring that to there. And if you leave it running, it will switch off after a while, but the pile will start to grow again. I'll turn the engine off for the time being. 
that can save you a lot of time, a lot of aggro, a lot of effort. Wheel loading back with some fours and that kind of thing. We've got 32,000 that is in it. So what we're going to do is follow the process through. I'm not going to put it all in because there's something else I'm going to show you as well. Bearing in mind, this is a free resource. There's another couple of things I'm going to show you as well. Not necessarily related to mining. Um, the next two are... There's one, and again, it's that kind of thing. I'm sure people are aware of it, and I'm sure people already know. But I suddenly thought, hang on a minute. My, my brain started fizzing. I was like, oh, uh, hang on. Um, but I'll show you. And there's one that Stephen uh, gave me a heads up to. And I'll explain why I wasn't aware of it. And probably something I think I need to do moving forward. So it's, it's you know, great bit of advice. I'm just passing the information along information sharing if you will now i have placed the iron furnace i've done a little bit of um sort of landscaping and stuff around it and you know just to tidy things up a little bit i will see you down there at, in a moment we'll get this process running so and it's as straightforward as that doing the metal so out along here i just decided to I'd buy this field up just to you know just so i could place it somewhere did a bit of landscaping, put a few trees in, just to kind of blend it all in a little bit. But I've got it down here. And like I said, it's as simple as offloading. There's no complicated process. There's no other stuff that needs to be added or anything like that. There you go. Conveyor belt gets chugging away. I'm not going to do all of it. I'll stop about there. And then it goes to a factory. The other thing to note as well is that the iron ore up at the, the mine is quite a slow trickle. It takes a while to build up a head of steam. So I'm assuming people are going to bring out mods and there'll be various different things for doing the mining and there might be faster machines and, and things that are going to help. Um, what we're going to do is turn that on. So that'll get running. What I'll probably do is speed up time a little while later. And so we can see some of the metal pallets having arrived, which is great. So yeah, it takes a while to build up a head of steam. But that's a, a sort of easier way of dealing with getting the ore in the first place and taking it to wherever you're going. That's great. But here's the other thing. Because it's a free commodity. Um, and there are quite a few placeables with sell points and stuff. Now one of the sell points I use quite a lot is the sell everything by Schultz modding. So I've installed a couple of them. And if we go to our cell points here, iron ore at the bottom there, the iron furnace. Now, the iron furnace is a weird one. Now, the iron furnace says buying. Now, unless you get a contract, which you might do, get a contract that says collect iron ore and take it to the iron furnace, I would be surprised if it did. It's giving you a price. Now, it's weird because the iron furnace isn't on the map already. You have to place it. If you buy it and place it, you own it. Therefore, you, won't, you don't get paid when you bring iron ore here. So it's weird there's a price there. But anyway... To sell everything containers, as you can see, we've got prices. Now, I'm on normal economy, but you've got a free commodity from the mine shaft, from the mine, that you can just go and collect and sell. All you've got to do is transport it, really. You're just sending it on its way, you're making a bit of money. So if you wanted to, you could just sell a bit of ore to get yourself going in the, in the first instance. If you haven't got this, you can't afford it yet. With all the various other new contracts and bits and mobs you can be doing, plus the forestry and stuff, you think, okay, well, every now and again, I'll just do a run of iron ore. We can, we can sell some, make a bit of money. So that one, the uh, Sell Everything mod by Schultz Modding, should work out. Okay, I'm going to drive across to there, and we're going to unload into that, and then, like I say, hopefully by the end, I'll speed up time and we'll get some metal pallets. Now, I know I'm a, I'm a few days behind here. I've been keeping up with mod reviews and there was a map tour I did a few videos in the day that's released and you know what it's like normal life kind of is involved in your day to day so I haven't got as much stuff out as I was hoping to but what I'm going to do is from today possibly tomorrow I'm going to be prepping and starting my new let's play I'm going to join the fray let, let battle commence I know a lot of people are already doing their let's plays on here so I'm going to do my take on it what I'm you know how I'm going to tackle it I just always think back to when I did my whole Mercra Let's Play, how much I enjoyed that, and how much people seem to enjoy watching it as well. It, it just it did really well, you know, people liked it. And um, 
that was just pure forestry. There was no, there, there really weren't any fields on the original version of that on FS19. Obviously, FS22. There's a whole load more stuff. Something else I did test was the buy anything silo, not the selling of everything, but the buy anything silo. Um, I wondered whether or not you could just buy iron ore. You know, if you could buy past the whole thing, if you had money and thought, you know what, I'll just buy it, but it wasn't letting me. It's not been added in. It's not on the sort of uh, on the XML stuff. But it was worth a try. You never know. All these things. It's a lot of testing. I've been sort of testing various different things in the background. So if we want to. When you've built up a bit of head of steam, leave it a couple of days, maybe come and get a load of iron ore. There you go, 32 grand. You can sell it, which is great. So the next one actually involves us being here at the sawmill. It's almost like I planned it. And like I say, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's not just me, and unless I'm, I can't be the only person that this, this, that's got this on. It seems I say on. It, it must be standard to the game, and I'm puzzled as to why giants have done it. I, I'm, and it involves this production building. Now, you can place that building when the building is placed. If you place your own one, it's just a, it's just a, a, a big building. But in this case, when I did the map tour, if you come to the front of this building to the office, if you don't want to spend the time doing a load of the productions that you need for doing stuff, you can buy them from here. But here's the thing, and I didn't even notice when I did the map tour. Didn't even dawn on me. I was so busy looking at my notes. If we click on here, we've got planks, planks long, wood beams, or prefab walls. Now, they all have prices, apart from the planks. The planks are free. Whether you get one pallet or ten pallets. So, let's click on ten pallets and buy. Nothing. Didn't cost me a penny. They're ready for me to collect in the hall. So, I go around... Now these can be used for various different things. Some of the jobs and places require them. These are bits I bought previously just to see what they look like. The prefab wall sections, the beams, you know, wood beams. And that one's got planks long. Just to have a look and see what they were like. Um, I've just got ten pallets of planks for nothing. Zero. Like, they have no value. But if we scroll up and we go to... Where are we? Where's our planks? Of course they have value. All those places will take them. The sell everything containers will take them. So, again, you could just come and get a load of these. It's like they're giving them away. Like I say, it can't just be me. There's, there's nothing I could have done on my map that's, that I've got them for free. And no one, that, that must be a thing. But anyway, just passing on the information. If you weren't aware, you can come and get planks. Again, all you've got to do is load them up and deliver them. You can make a bit of money. Now, you may consider, well, that's cheating. I didn't put it on the map. Giants did. The same with the iron ore being free. They could have said you can come and get it. You can buy it from there. Or you had to do some process to get it in the first place. They haven't. It's, it's free. It's there for you to take. Giants are fully aware there are mods and things out that people use. The sell everything containers, the sell everything stations that they've been around for ages. And the same with the planks. They, they've put them in free, not me. I'm just, you know, if they're giving them away, great. That's the planks. So, like I said, we'll come back to the metal in a little while. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to show you, and I've got a little bit of setting up to do for that first, is up at the North Sawmill. And this is courtesy of Steve. So thank you very much, Steve, for pointing this out. Actually, I'm going to talk about it now. And this, this is in regard to settings. Now, when I do my map tours, we go down to settings. This one. When I do my map tours, I usually have help window on. I have interactive zone markers on so I can see where all the places are and field info on. What I don't usually have on is the info trigger. I, I generally speaking, it's just, just right from the outset. You know, I, as I was going around the maps, there was loads of question marks. And, you know, you do your initial drive around to have a look. Fine. I haven't had that on doing map tours since, and I should have done. Um, because I got a message from Steve saying, were you aware of X, Y, Z, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And I said, actually, no, I wasn't aware of that. And he said to me, well, if, you, if you go, there's a question mark there, and it will tell you. I, said, well, I didn't see a question mark anywhere. Because as soon as I put the information triggers back on again, the question mark popped up. It's that thing of, it's so obvious, and I don't, you know, I say, 
which is something I hadn't done. But again, you may not be aware of it. If you are, that's great. If you're already using it, if you already know, that's fantastic. So we're going to head up to the North Sawmill. As we're nearly here, it was Stuart that told me about tabbing the vehicles. Did you know if you reset three vehicles that are not yours, it will let you tab to them afterwards? That was by Stuart, so thank you very much for that, Stuart. So, we're nearly at the North Sawmill. Oh, I can't remember if I bought the North Sawmill or not. I might have done. This is just kind of a test map. I've just been trying a few things out here. So, let's just stop here for a second. Did I buy it? Yeah, I did. Um, so, if we come down to here, and I go back to that menu, and I put on info triggers, the question mark's there. Like I say, I don't know why I haven't, I haven't done it since. I open the menu, and it gives you information about the sawmills. So the top one, we knew about. Put your trees into the mill pond. I showed that on the video, and it takes them out, and it goes up the conveyor. It's absolutely fantastic. The bottom one, you can't purchase the southern sawmill. That's just a sell point. Um, you can take finished product, pro, uh, products there, and or you can purchase them for a small fee, zero being small. The middle one is the one I wasn't aware of. Throw smaller trees and branches into this machine to produce more wood chips than usual. Now, at this point in time, I'm not sure where the exit, where you get the wood chips out from. Well, that's why is that saying wood chips one litre? How is that more wood chips than usual? That's that's a all the end bits, all the trees and branches. That's something to be aware of as well when you're doing the um, containers. If you're using a tree harvester and you're cutting piles, often the end of the tree will be shorter than what you've set your cut length at. So if you're doing six metre, nine metre or 12 metre logs to go into the containers, be aware that if you grab up a whole bundle and you've got a short one on there, it, it, it will dock you money. I'm assuming it's under here because there's no icons with, with all the icons on it, it didn't show anything so even with them all on I don't know if it's here nothing's coming up hmm. it's a peculiar one I'm not sure where we get them out from is there an outflow pipe in it? Like, that's what I'm saying I've, I've got these on I've got interactive zone markers on info trigger and turn off now I've got my interactive zone markers and it doesn't, nothing was showing here at all. But this piece of machinery, I did cut down a tree, where am I? If I cut a chunk off that, grab that as far as I can. On the end preferably, swing around, like so. If I drop that into there, Listen. So that's wood chipping. Oh, is it inside? I'm just looking at where it might have gone to. Gives you more wood chips than usual. I've put about four or five lumps of limp timber in there. Now that's now saying wood chips, two litres. I'm not sure how that's more than usual. But you can, you can wood chip there. I, I, like I say, I wasn't aware of that. That's where you get them out from, though. It's over here. That's the train, isn't it? Ah, oh, can you... Oh, no, because this is the um, the branch. It doesn't come off the branch. Ah, oh, is it over there? The wood chips go right the way through this whole production facility and go into your pit here to be collected. Potentially. Aha! That kind of makes more sense, doesn't it? So that's why they appear then. So that's something I would say. I wasn't aware of, just passing on the information. If you're aware of it already, great. If you weren't, you can wood chip a whole load of stuff and put it in there. A lot of people were asking about the shipping containers. I did the video about auto load log trays. Now, they are auto load, and if you're just selling lumber, that's absolutely fine. Unfortunately, no, you can't unload from them. So you can't take them to sell points that require lumber. If you need to do lumber deliveries you need to put them onto a usual a regular log trailer however you want to refer to it regular log trailer these are the six meter ones i've got packed full um 
and they can either be sold here at the container depot and, and the other thing people weren't aware of seem didn't seem to be aware of I, I, I think I didn't mention it did I? I thought I had you buy the container you fill it with logs and you sell the whole thing so you get paid for the logs and the container so it will all go and then you get a new container to go again uh, whether people find that frustrating or not you so you can sell them here at the container depot or you can rent a train and you can go up the ramp load these onto the train send them off and then they will get sold out to Elm Creek on the train if you want to go down that route like I say you can't unfortunately um, you can't unload them once they're loaded up whether that will change in the future moving forward I don't know the other thing I did some testing on was the sequoias because I was cutting down some trees to load these up and it was loading up fine I thought yeah but to be fair look at the size of the sequoias you cut those down think of the the, the literage of, of wood you're gonna get when you put those in well, here's the thing Giants have done a little bit like they did with the with the um, the precision farming and all the stuff to do with um, being penalized for using herbicides and that kind of stuff that you're not supposed to cut down sequoias I get it giant redwoods they're protected and that kind of thing my argument to that is that if that's the case why put them on the map why have them here have them as decorative but you can't cut them down it will allow you to cut them down it will allow you to wood chip them but what they've done, some of us have been I think what Giants did was because you're not supposed to, because they're protected, you get very little timber and very little wood chips from them. And they're right. For the size of them, the girth of them, the weight of them, the amount of wood chips and lumber you should get from them, you don't. You think, well, that's a bit... You know, in real life, if I was to cut one down, and I know you're not supposed to, I would get the timber and I would get all the wood chip from that if I wanted to wood chip it. They're kind of making a decision that you're not allowed, so you shouldn't. It's, it's a weird... I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, they're here. There's loads of them. You can cut them down, but in all honesty, it's just not worth the hassle. Um, because you just don't get very much from them. Whether, again, whether that will change in the future. I'd say it's just I've been doing a little bit of testing, bit, a few things here and there, and I just thought, wrap it all up into one video and, and kind of show people. So I will show you the, with the uh, container if you haven't done this already. I'm sure, like I say, we're, we're almost a week in to the game, haven't been released completely to all platforms. You may have not got it yet. You may have not got to this point yet. There you go, whole lot, 44,080. Now those six metre shipping containers, the large one, 40 footer, is 5,500. 30 footer is 4,680. And the 20 footer, the one I just sold, was 3,850. So take your 3,850 off of what I just got. I made about 40 grand on the lumber in that. Obviously the prices are going to fluctuate. That will change and you know, it all depends. What I have seen people doing as well, I think, was it Rob that did it? Rob sent me a picture. I'm trying to think. Right, Rob, Michael. Might be Michael. The You know the big tub grinder? The one you can do all sorts of stuff. Sugar beet to sugar beet cut. You can do timber. Was it black sheet mods in the board out? The big tub grinder. He had the tub grinder set up with the um, yarder cable, the, the cable yarder above it running across he was bringing the trees across it and then when it got over the tub grinder dropping them into the tub grinder to do wood chips brilliant such a clever idea and like i said whenever these things come out new maps new mods people come up with ingenious solutions to problems you know you think i yeah probably wouldn't have thought to do that um but fantastic idea and, and it worked absolutely perfectly so what i'm going to do now is head back down to the iron furnace i'm going to speed up time a little bit and let's have a look at these metal pallets or when they emerge i might stick a few more bits of um lumber i suppose there's no reason at all just saying that why you couldn't do the same with this oh that's a clever idea give me a minute i'm going to try something Right then, I brought the cable yarder over. I've set it up down there, over the top of the wood chipper. Now you're going to have to get the angle just right. I don't think it's going to work. And obviously it's only going to work for a, a while until you've cleared all the trees around here. But you could then move it out, change the direction. You could get a few trees around this again. But it just kind of highlights the, the concept, the idea of what you could potentially do. Let's raise that up. 
I don't know if I've cut these short enough. But what we'll do is we will enable carriage follow. Disable it. Do I just come a little bit further along? Potentially. So what we'll do is move carriage. That way a little bit. So I don't know if this is going to work. And then... <laughs> Cable yard is just so cool. <laughs> so it can be done. How much I just wanted to give it a go. I was just curious. What is it showing now for wood chips? Better be more. Where's my thing gone? The 13 litre. See, I'm. I'm not sure if Giants. I don't know. It's it's a curious thing, isn't it? Well, I think what I'd be curious to do would be do some testing. Have a standard wood chipper next to it. Cut down a tree, stick it through the wood chipper. Cut down a tree, stick it through there. Because that concept of um, it gives you more than usual wood chips, it really doesn't. Unless I'm doing something wrong, but that's going through that wood chipper, and that's all it's saying. I've got 13 liters, although. What I'll do, let's go and grab, get the wood chips from there. Sorry, I know this this, this this has gone on about 20 minutes longer than I intended because these extra bits I, I wasn't wasn't my intention to do. Um, but I thought, you know what, while we're here, let's give it a go. That cable yard uh, opens up so many possibilities, so many ideas for various different things you can do. Can't just be 13 litres in there, surely. Surely they haven't got to be done with a bucket. They come through the processing into there and I've got to pick them up with a bucket, maybe. Learn along with me, Mr. Silby. <laughs> Let's see, shall we? Do we have 13 litres of wood chips here? Will it? Let me scoop them up. It will. Right, so that's a curious one. Because I haven't put anything else through here, not that I'm aware of. And that pile was certainly a lot smaller when we first did it. So whilst the production itself there under old sawmill if we go across that side wood chip says 13 litres in the building over here which i'm trying to work out how that process goes it looks like so we are getting more okay take that back that's cool so it's going through the wood chipper into the building out through there along these conveyor belts right along the top there out across there up and into the so there's obviously all these different processes that are going on here and we're getting the wood chips coming out at the end of it. Well, I mean, you don't have to use this. Of course you don't have to. You can just use, you know, wheel loaders or skids loaders, whatever you want to do. I mean, to me, you could have this set up. You could just bring your lumber. You could you could use these to take it out of trailers or whatever to put into there if you wanted to. However you want to go about it. So you can get more wood chips, apparently, than normal, over here. Now we're going to go down to the iron furnace. And there we have it. I sped up time at 9.46, it's 12.40, so nearly three hours. But that's actually not too bad for our first roll of metal. 1,000 pieces, 1 1.3 tonnes. That can go towards a whole host of various different things. So going back to what we originally came on to have a look at. Iron ore from the hillside. 
bring it down to the iron furnace. Like I say, this isn't cheap, but I mean, if it was me, because there's not one on the on the map from the start, I would set my map up and place one somewhere already, just so I've got it. But I mean, that's just me. If you want to build up to doing this, you absolutely can. So we go, 1.3 tons, ready to go, and that's it. That's what you need. That's your metal. I know someone asked me, once you've done that, what do I do with it? Well, that's it. There's nothing else. There's no other process. That's what you take off to various different locations that are requiring it. Um, and that's it for me on this kind of tips and hacks and just a little bit of everything, really. I hope you found it useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.